Let's talk about Lightroom's coolest feature, the color grading formerly known as split toning. In general, this tool is used to add color to the highlights, the midtones or the shadows of your photo. This might not sound very powerful at first, but this tool right here is the best way to create unique and, air quotes, cinematic looks. First, expand the color grading panel. Here you'll see the freeway color grading UI with all the color wheels for highlights, midtones and shadows right there, as well as a slider controlling the luminance of each. We don't really want to use these however, since we can only adjust things very, very roughly. Instead, we can get to more advanced settings by clicking on the different circles at the top of the panel. The far left one is the freeway color grading in which we are right now. Then we have the shadows, the midtones, the highlights and settings for the global image. Which one of those you are adjusting first doesn't really matter. For golden hour shots like these, I like to start with the highlights. So let's go in there. Here you'll see a bigger color wheel and a bigger luminance slider. Below that we have blending and balance, but those two are not specifically for the highlights, but are universal for all categories, except for the global one, but more on those two later. As I said, there are more advanced settings for better results, however Lightroom hides those by default. To reveal them, click on the arrow. We now have additional hue and saturation slider, which gives us precise control over the color we want to add. Now let's enchant the colors of this shot. We are working with an early golden hour image. That means naturally there are a lot of warm highlights. We can emphasize these by making the highlights even warmer. For that, drag up the hue slider. Since we want warm highlights, make sure the hue is in a warm color range between red and yellow. As you drag up the slider, you can see an indicator going around the color wheel. Overall, however, the colors aren't changing. That's because once we set up the hue, we also must increase the saturation. So bring that up and watch how the image is changing. Again, you can see an indicator in the color wheel moving. How much saturation you are adding is up to you and what you want to achieve. For shots like these, I like to bring the saturation up a lot to give it a warm, colorful look. But keep in mind, split toning isn't always necessary. It wouldn't make much sense to add warm highlights to a dark cold forest scene as an example. Now, if you don't want to use these sliders, you can also click in the color wheel to set up hue and saturation at the same time. To set it up separately, hold down the control key and move the indicator around the, to change the hue. For the saturation, hold down the shift key and drag it up or down. Finally, we have one slider left, the luminance. With this one, you are affecting the brightness. So bringing down the luminance makes the highlights darker, while raising them makes the highlights brighter. This way, you can further tweak the exposure and contrast of your image. In this case, let's raise it a little bit, just to make the highlights slightly brighter. Once I adjusted the highlights, I usually continue with the midtones. Again, keep in mind, choosing the right color is highly dependent on the scene. In this case, we have two options. Either make the midtones warmer or colder. Both would work. As I want to create a very warm golden hour photo, I'm going to set the hue to a warm orange again. This time, I'm going a little easier on the saturation, because we do have more midtones than highlights in the current image. And thus, increasing the midtone saturation has a heavier effect overall. This is looking pretty good. I also want to raise the luminance to give the image some more punch. Wonderful. Now, just as an example, I'm going to change the hue for a moment, going from warm to cold, so you can see the difference. We still have very warm highlights, but overall the golden hour look is much less present. Here it just comes down to personal preferences. I want to keep it warm, so let's reset the hue. Next up, the shadows. Here is where I usually add a bit of color contrast, which means instead of going with the warm color tone, I'm going in the literal opposite direction of the color wheel and set the hue to something cold right there in the blue range. 
Since for this photo the highlights are more important, I want to keep the shadow subtle. This means only using a very low amount of saturation. Of course, if you would be working with a dark image where the shadows are overwhelming the highlights, it would make sense to put more emphasis into the shadows by bringing up the saturation more. Finally, let's also raise the contrast a bit by bringing down the luminance slider. Perfect. Now, before jumping into the global settings, we want to take a closer look at the universal blending and balance sliders. I have to admit, I don't use them very often, but in certain situations, they can be very helpful. So, blending defines how much shadows, midtones, and highlights are overlapping. If you bring up the blending to 100, those three regions will spill over into each other. For the image we are working on, this means we are making it warmer since we made the warmer highlights and midtones stronger by just using more saturation. I'm not going to bring it up to 100 for this image, but I do want to raise the blending some more. So that's looking pretty good. With the balance, you can put different weight on the shadows or the highlights. That means bringing the balance to the right, more of the image will be interpreted as highlights and thus making it warmer with our settings applied. Bringing the balance to the left, we will get more shadows and thus making the image overall colder. Since I don't want to change the balance, I'm just double clicking on this pin to reset the settings here. Finally, we have the global settings. Just as the name suggests, here you can set up a color that is globally applied. We can set the hue to something warm again and carefully bring up the saturation to make everything slightly warmer. Just like that. The global settings are another tool I rarely use, but it's good to know these settings are there. And as always, if you want to compare the results from the split toning to before, all you need to do is simply click on that switch up above. Here you can see the difference. And that's it for this week's masterclass. If you want to be updated, please subscribe to this channel. So thank you very much for watching this video and hopefully see you guys next time.